don't know about you, but even at my grand old age of 55, I still love Christmas. Anyone else love Christmas? I mean, I love the trees, the lights, I love the food, I love the family gatherings. The one thing I really struggle with these days is actually working out what I want for Christmas. Um, so for a bit of fun, if I said, you can have anything you wish for this Christmas with no budget limit, what would you go for? How about one of these? Dream home. Anyone like, like look at that? Or a supercar? Oh, that, that got a bit more. I don't know you, but I think it's something about December in England. I fancy two weeks somewhere like this. All expenses paid, you know, all inclusive. Anyone else? Yeah. Well, I've got great news for this Christmas, that there is a gift that is far more attainable than those, and also is guaranteed to meet our deepest needs in a way that a dream home, a supercar, and a luxury holiday won't. The actor Jim Carrey, who is somebody who would be used to the high life, said this, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so that they can see that it's not the answer. So what is the answer? What, if you like, is the missing piece in the jigsaw of our lives? Well, it's found in the words that the angels brought to the shepherds on that first Christmas. We, we heard about it in our reading earlier in uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 14. These are the words, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men on whom his favor rests. What's the missing peace, pardon the pun? It's peace. It's what the Bible describes as a rich experience of well-being, harmony, completeness, health in every part of our lives. The Old Testament word is the word shalom, that we translate peace. So it's not just an absence of conflict, it's living life as we always long for and in a way that God intended it. That's the missing piece. And that's far better than a luxury home or holiday or a car. Why? Because you can have all those things but still not be at peace still not be happy. So the question is, um, who's this peace available for? And the good news is for all of us. You see, I love the fact that on the very first Christmas, the first recipients, the first to hear this good news of peace on earth, were not the religious insiders in Jerusalem, but were a bunch of shepherds who were like the religious and social outcasts of the day, a few miles away on a hillside in Bethlehem. And it's like Dr. Luke is deliberately letting us know that this message what was first to those who might have considered themselves away from God and away from religion, as if to say, if it's for the shepherds, it's for all of us. Wherever we're at in our relationship with God or not, we can all know peace this Christmas. The question is, how do we receive it? And what's it got to do with Jesus and his birth. Hundreds of years before uh, the angels announced those words, the shepherds, we have the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament bringing us these words, famous words that Handel based his, much of his Messiah on. It's, it's the, the, it, Isaiah 9 verse 6 to 7 says this, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders. And he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Isaiah is looking forward to an event when something would happen through a child being born and a son being given that somehow would bring peace because his name and his nature is the Prince of Peace. And as a result of him coming and him ruling, there would be an increase of peace, this well-being, that shalom across the earth. And of course, when we celebrate Christmas, we're saying, it's happened. The Prince of Peace has come. He has come to this earth in order that everybody who receives him might know his peace at the center of our lives. If you uh, think of your life uh, represented by this image, and if we want 
peace this Christmas, we have to receive Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, right in the center of our lives. And here's the good news. When he comes into the center, his peace, that sense of well-being, begins to radiate out into every area of our lives in an increasing measure. And what I want to do briefly is look at three key relationships or dimensions of our lives where Jesus brings peace um, into our lives. And the first is, Jesus comes to give us peace within ourselves, or what we may call inner peace. How many of you like a greater measure of inner peace? Um, I saw this poem a while back uh, entitled Inner Peace. It goes like this. If you can start the day without caffeine, if you can always be cheerful, ignoring aches and pains, if you can resist complaining and boring people with your troubles, if you can eat the same food every day and be grateful for it, if you can understand when your loved ones are too busy to give you any time, if you can take criticism and blame without resentment, if you can conquer tension without medical help, if you can relax without alcohol, if you can sleep without the aid of drugs, then you're probably the family dog. <laughs> I mean, that is a picture of inner peace. What a, what a dude, eh? Isn't that a chilled out pose? How many like to live life like that? But sadly, most of us human beings in our nation right now are not living with that measure of inner peace. In fact, we seem to be experiencing increasing levels of stress and anxiety in spite of all the technology and the resources we have, or maybe partly because of them. A survey this year of stress in the UK revealed that 85% of UK adults say they're experiencing stress on a regular basis. And 37% said that they spend a whole day every week experiencing stress. That's a lot of stress. So why are we as a nation feeling so stressed? Well, there are a number of reasons why it seems that people are increasingly anxious. Top of the list is worries about money or work and health concerns. There's people are concerned about failure to get enough sleep or about household chores. My wife says I don't worry enough about those. <laughs> and then, of course, on a big picture, you know, all is not calm. You know, we've got the B word in the background or in the foreground, the Brexit word. Let's not go there th this morning. But there's lots going on, isn't there? Maybe in, in our lives or our families or our world around that are in causing these increased levels of stress. And yet here we have the promise that because of Christmas, because of the Prince of Peace has come, we can experience an increase of peace, including, I might add, when the storms are raging all around us. Last night, around a thousand of us gathered here and we, we managed to come into this building and we experienced refuge from the vestiges of Storm Deirdre. I mean, why do they call the storms those names? Anyway, so it was, it was howling, it was raining out there, but we were unaware of it because we'd come into the refuge of this building. And it's a, bit, a little bit like that. When we come to Jesus Christ and have him in the center, we can be experiencing all kinds of um, outward storms. Life is sometimes tough, but on the inside, we can experience a tremendous sense of peace. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, Karen and I celebrated our 33rd wedding anniversary. Uh, and thank you. We, we went away to the West Country, went down and visited the church where we first got married. We just had a fantastic, enjoyable, refreshing, and restful time. We came back, I was looking forward to a, a great autumn, and then the, the night after we got back, I had a phone call from my dad saying that my mum uh, was seriously ill. Turned out she'd got a cancerous growth right near her pancreas. And for any of you who've experienced that kind of storm, you know, immediately you go on a kind of emotional roller coaster. First and foremost for me, it's massive concern for my mum and what she's facing and my dad and, you know, and all the what if questions start coming to the fore. But very quickly in that process, without at the time anything outwardly changing in terms of the prognosis, I began to experience all I could say was a supernatural peace. 
It was like in spite of the storm and natural emotions and feeling for uh, my mum in particular, it was like what the Bible describes in Philippians 4-7 became true for me. It's this amazing promise where it says, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And as I'd been praying, and as I know many others have been praying, it was like I was clothed in or surrounded by this incredible peace that didn't come from within me because I was naturally worried, but it came from Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. And I, I say all that um, to say this, first, just an update. My mum had a successful operation and is recovering, but there's still a journey to go. But I know for many of you here right now, you will be in some kind of a storm. It may be a health storm for yourself or somebody around you. Maybe a financial storm or a, a work storm or a relational storm. Why not this Christmas turn to Jesus, the Prince of Peace, invite him into the center of your life and allow him to give you that peace within even when the storm is raging without. That's the first gift that Jesus brings us. He brings us peace within ourselves. Secondly, um, he brings us peace with others, what we may call relational peace. So we've got inner peace and then relational peace. And it's so important, isn't it, that we have peace in our relationships. Sometimes it's not possible because of where somebody else is at, but something happens when we experience inner peace. We become better at doing life well and interacting with other people. And I think if there's any time where we need peace with others, it seems to be particularly at Christmas time. I mean, some of you like the thought of those annoying rallies again. But seriously, it seems like in a season of supposed joy, peace, and goodwill, Christmas can be one of the most stressful times for families and friends. A survey was done asking 2,000 people what caused the most arguments and bust-ups in their families over the Christmas period. Here's a few of the key entries. In at number 20 is mum having too many pre-dinner tipples. <laughs> Not to be left out. At number 15 is dad having too many pre-dinner tipples. A lot of alcohol flowing, obviously. And then at, in at number 10 was the children using their devices at the dinner table. And I might add, and some adults too. And then this is shocking. Number five, cheating over board games or charades. <laughs> I mean, can you believe it? At Christmas time of all times, or any time, <laughs> maybe. And then in at number one, number one cause of family bust-ups, have a guess, who owns the remote control? <laughs> but the great news is that when we have the Prince of Peace in our lives, certainly in my experience, it helps us in our relationships. See, having inner peace means I become a better friend, a more considerate and forgiving husband, a more caring dad and son. Even these days, and this is miracle of miracles, I even like Manchester United fans, and this is as a die-hard Man City fan. I mean, what a picture of transformation that is. I jest. On a more serious note, it may well be that as you look ahead to Christmas, or indeed any season of your life, you're aware that there is a lack of harmony. There, is, there are relational situations that cause you great angst and great pain. Well, and you, and you may even think, well, I'm not sure I can face that situation. I'm not sure I can face that person. I haven't got the strength to carry on. Well, you may not have the resources. I might not have the resources in ourselves. But Jesus, the Prince of Peace, has come to bring harmony between peoples and families and races. He is the author of reconciliation. He wants to give us the strength that we need. He wants to come and heal our hurts and help us be more forgiving, be more caring, be more considerate. Why not invite Jesus to come and help you in your relationships this Christmas? So peace within ourselves. Secondly, peace with others. But really there's a third dimension of peace without which we're never going to experience lasting inner peace or relational peace. And it's peace with God. Peace with God. St. Augustine famously said this, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest 
in you. I think that's so profound and it's so true. Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. You see, we weren't designed to be distant from or out of harmony with Almighty God. He's our creator. We're only really at peace and rest when our hearts are at peace and rest in him. So the question is, why aren't our hearts at peace? Why is there a seeming gap between us and God? Well, the Bible uh, says basically because we turned away from God as, as a human race. We chose to do things our way rather than God's way. The Bible calls it sin. It's our independence. It's us thinking that we're in charge. We can do a better job without God. And that's brought a separation, which means that, that this sort of elusive sense of where is the peace? Where's the well-being? Why can't we find it? Because fundamentally something has gone wrong. Let, let me use a, a, an, an analogy. If you imagine God in heaven upstairs, he's not literally upstairs, but he's in heaven, and we're downstairs, upstairs where God is, there is perfect peace. There's well-being, there's joy. Life is completely whole and blessed and amazing. But down here on earth, in our lives, we experience a lack of this peace, a lack of this shalom. And because of our sin, we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't even pray our way there. We can't do good works. We can't um, get to the, the God where all the peace is. So God, because he's loving and he hasn't abandoned us, he said, I'm going to fix this problem once and for all. I'm going to come in person and I'm going to come from upstairs, downstairs, and I'm going to come and dwell on the earth. And that's what Christmas is all about. That Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth to be, in the words of the songs that we were singing earlier, Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so in the greatest miracle in history, what we've been singing about and celebrating about, and billions of people still across the world are singing and celebrating 2,000 years later, is the fact that God became man in the person of Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's the incarnation. It's God coming and being born uh, on, in a Bethlehem stable. Uh, and now we can know the gap that we experience, that sense of we can't get to God, the peace of God has come so that we can receive him. And of course, the story doesn't end there. Jesus just doesn't get born and then stay a baby. As you saw in that beautiful depiction of Mary, did you know? Jesus grows up and anointed by the Holy Spirit, he lived the most remarkable life that anybody's ever lived, lived, demonstrating how good God is, how when God is in human form, there's healing, there's well-being, there's freedom, there's peace. But then he did something even more wonderful and life-changing. Jesus Christ, the Son of God and yet a real human being, died on a cross for our sins once and for all to pay the price that the gap, if you like, between us and God might be bridged through his cross that means that forever we can have peace with God, we can be reconciled with God, not just now, but through all eternity. Sometimes uh, people use this phrase, you know, when somebody's on their deathbed, they say, um, you know, are you at peace with your maker? Well, it's not a bad question. It's actually a really important question. But the whole point about Christmas is not wait and chance it to see if you, if you can just get in uh, it, it, w just before you die. No, make peace with God now. God has made peace with you. Receive the peace of God. And when you know the peace of God in your life, then it overflows into peace inner peace that means it can then manifest itself into our peace with others. The great news is this is for all of us, but it's something that has to be received. You see, on that first Christmas, the shepherds heard the message, there's peace on earth. And that was an amazing experience to them, but their lives weren't changed until they acted on what they'd heard. Don't you remember in the reading, but it says this. They said, let's go to Bethlehem and see. They made a, a journey. 
and they went and they saw the baby Jesus and somehow even seeing him as a baby, there was something that changed them and they went out and they told the good news to everybody. Well, 2,000 years on, we don't have to go to Bethlehem. We're not going to see a baby because Jesus didn't just get born. He didn't just live a great life and die. He rose from the dead and he's alive forevermore. And that means he's present by his Holy Spirit. It means you can pray and meet with Jesus anytime, anywhere. And he can change your life. I know that from first exp first-hand experience. You see, although I grew up in a Christian home, so I kind of knew about the message of Christianity in Jesus Christ. I hadn't made a personal decision to invite him in my life. And so rather than experiencing peace, I actually had a huge sense of restlessness and lack of peace. I remember trying all kinds of different things to, as it were, fill that, that hole that only Jesus could fill. Outwardly, I was doing pretty well. Life was looking good. Lots of opportunity and success. But inwardly, I knew there was something missing. And then my life changed when somebody invited me to a service, a bit like this. It was actually in the center of Oxford. I was there as a student. And in the very last hymn of the service, I experienced just all I can say. It was like the presence of God, like I'd never done before. And I knew not only was God real and Jesus was alive, but I knew he was calling me to a personal relationship with himself. That was the start of a journey. And then several months later, I prayed a simple prayer, just like I'm going to invite you to pray in, in, in a short while. And it was basically a prayer of saying, Lord Jesus, I tried life my way <laughs> and there's something missing and I've messed up and I've done a whole bunch of stuff I regret. But Lord, I invite you to come in to the center of my life, into the driving seat of my life. And as I prayed that prayer, I asked him to forgive me and to come into me. Not only did I, I know I was being forgiven and was like internally washed clean, but something I wasn't expecting was this incredible sense of peace and joy flooded through my whole being. What was going on? I was receiving the peace of God that manifests itself in a deep inner peace that has ever since changed my life completely. And you see, my experience is not unique. Since that first Christmas, 2,000 years ago, literally billions of people have prayed similar kind of way and invited Christ to come in, and he's changed and is changing their lives. Even over the last 30 years, just in this one local church, Karen and I have had the joy and the privilege of seeing hundreds of people whose lives have been changed as a result of inviting Jesus in. And we've just got two stories we want to show you of people who've received Jesus and the, the transformation, the joy and the peace that he's brought to their lives. Please watch this. I used to feel like I wasn't really living life. I was more observing it. As I've heard someone say about depression before, that it was as though you were, you were watching life happen through a pane of glass. I just had this constant feeling of of emptiness, of restlessness. And in order to try and fill that emptiness, I would go out, I would get drunk, I would do something embarrassing, I would feel really foolish about it. And then the only time I would feel okay again, the only time I would feel kind of numb is when I got drunk again. I just got to a point of just thinking I hate the way I'm living, I'm hating feeling like this. And things came to a head at one point and I decided I would try giving up drinking. A few weeks after that, a friend at work told me that she was a Christian and she invited me along to this Kingsgate. I think it was just, you know, my life isn't it's working out the way I'm doing it now, so what have I got to lose? After all, maybe God is the answer. And I, I came along and I had a, met some wonderful people, had a great uplifting experience, um, but I still wanted to look into it, find out whether it was true or not. And I did. I started looking into things and I found that the truth claims of Christianity as far as I was concerned, they were true, but it, was, it wasn't just an intellectual exercise. I had an experience of God. When I came to the point that I thought this is real and I asked for forgiveness and Jesus came into my life, everything changed. Since getting to know God, that restlessness has gone, that uh, emptiness has been filled, that sense of, of despair and depression has just been replaced with just this sense of joy, which is always there, you know, whether I'm in the classroom or uh, as, a, as a husband, as a, uh, as a father, just that sense of joy is always with me. 
And I don't know where I'd be today if I hadn't uh, met the Lord, if I hadn't accepted that invitation to Kingsgate. But when I think about how much God has transformed my life and how much is going on right now and how much he's given me, if I'm honest, I don't really want to think about it. Hi, my name's Jo, and I wouldn't have said I was a Christian or that I had a faith of my own. I believed in Jesus and the story of Christmas that he was born, but that was about as far as it went. And yeah, I was happy, but I've always struggled with anxieties and I guess I've always felt like something was missing. A while ago, we was having some building works done, which ended nearly in a disaster of our house nearly collapsing. And that for me was a real low point. So I knew my friend, one of the other mums from school was a Christian and she came to Kingsgate. She said, well, why don't you come along to Alpha? So I said, yep, yeah, sign me up. It was whilst I was on Alpha, I was able to ask all those questions and I felt there was a change in me. I felt that I, I wanted to know Jesus and I wanted a faith. So I started to pray for the first time and for the first time, having had many years of anxieties, I was able to feel an inner peace, to feel peace like I've not had before. I chose to invite Jesus into my life and I wouldn't look back. I feel like that inner peace has stayed with me and I know that I am loved and that he is with me. Two great stories of people who've just prayed simple prayers inviting Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and the transformation that he's made in their lives. And of course, all our stories are different. You know, you may be a young person here, and like me, you, you're going through all kinds of sense of inner restlessness. Well, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, can fill that void. You may be slightly later in life. You say, well, is it too late for me? No, it's never too late. Jesus Christ wants to change your life, the rest of your life, and for all eternity. And you don't need to be having massive stress right now. It may just be you know like I did and like so many of us do, that without Jesus, the Prince of Peace, there's something missing. And so what we need to be aware of, it's not enough just to know about this. We have to receive this gift. Any uh, great gift needs to be received. If I said, um, in this envelope, I have the title deeds to that dream home, and the first person to come up and grab the envelope is yours. How many you would... I know we're British here, but you might just... Yeah, yeah, hands up, yeah. Um, or I said, well, I've got the, the, the keys to that supercar. You can just come and all you've got to do is receive it. Or I said, I got the two tickets to that all expensive luxury holiday. Anyone interested? <laughs> Getting a bit more enthusiastic. <laughs> but, but seriously, we have, through Jesus Christ, the best gift. Not just for Christmas, but for the rest of our lives. It, it really is amazing to when we invite him, the Prince of Peace, and allow him to rule, allow him to reign in our lives. His peace changes us through peace with God, peace within, peace in our relationships in an increasing measure. And so what I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity to receive this greatest gift of all by praying a simple prayer. For some of you, it may be you've never, ever been to church before or you've never prayed a prayer like this. And you, you just want to join me as I lead you in inviting Jesus to come in to the center of your lives. Others of you may at some time have prayed a prayer in the past, uh, but you know that there's a lack of peace in your heart and you say, I need to recommit my life to Jesus. Invite him back in the center. For many others here, it may just be, you know, I need an upgrade of peace. Maybe there's a particular situation that's troubling you. Well, let's pray together for an increase of the peace of Jesus in every area of our lives. So can we pray together? Would you mind just uh, bowing your heads and closing your eyes? And so I'm going to pray a prayer and like to invite you to join with me, say it out loud. And as you say it, you're saying it to a real God who is present through Jesus Christ by his Holy Spirit. And as you pray, he's going to hear your prayer. He's going to come in and he's going to change you. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, 
Thank you for coming from heaven to earth. Thank you for dying on a cross for our sins. Thank you for rising from the dead. That we might have new life and true peace. This day, I invite you to come into the very center of my life by your Holy Spirit. Please forgive me and fill me with an increase of your peace and help me to fulfill your purpose for my life. In your name, Jesus. Amen.